What's up everyone, welcome back for a new guide on Dragon Quest Infinity Strash and today I want to make a quick guide on how I did my, son, my solo temple run for the achievement. So for this one it's quite easy, I'm only using MAM as martial artist and I want to showcase my build before actually diving into the run and I won't talk about, about the run specifically but I'm just going to mention my build because I think it's the most important thing that is defining if you can do it or not. So first of all I would advise getting a few of these bonds that I will show at a decent level which is probably at 8 or 7 or 8 at least and uh, of course if, if it's higher it, it's going to be easier so here are my bonds and how i did it so i focused fully on mam being a damage dealer and a physical damage dealer and with this card she actually absorb hp whenever she deals damage with normal attacks and of course it scales if she crits so we're going to fully dive on into this uh, specific stereotype of a physical crit uh, attacker so the one she has that is specific is this one mam results of training she actually stack more attack every time she perfect dodge sometimes it helps but you don't want to only focus on that because it it's just going to be so long if you, you try to keep that buff. But just know that sometimes she will has she will have more attack if you do perfect dodge. So it's kind of worth it to actually go for it if you can and if it doesn't take too much of your attention. This one is great because it has attack defense and beast rage, which is also attack damage, more attack damage if she takes damage for 20 seconds so it's kind of cool because all the healings she gets is from attack damage this one is more crit rate more feel more uh, grass gauge feel and first aid which uh, gives her a chance on her normal attacks to give a boost of uh, healing so which actually makes a, a good deal of the, a good difference if you manage to get that in lucky times this one is just more crit damage and crit rate this one is actually the perfect one for the build because it gives her more ab absorb hp and more attack so it perfectly fits into the build which i would really advise getting and the last one is more attack and crit rate and with this build really mam is only here to attack and sustain whenever she takes damage so you don't have to dodge you don't have to block you just have to keep doing more damage the only times you want to be really really careful is when you can't attack too much because you're cc'd or something then you want to use your heal manually or maybe a few plants that was the build that I had when I when I finished the challenge, but I think the one card I would swap over and maybe consider is actually swapping Beast King's Anguished by Justice itself is my enemy. Because one thing that is preventing mams from dealing damage and, re and recovering H HP is actually getting stunned by attacks. And with that, you can get the barricade effect that, is, that gives you 10% chance to not be thrown back for 10 seconds when you are damaged. So it's kind of a flip of a coin to if you get this or not when you need it. But I would certainly try it at least uh, on, a, on a run to see if it's better than what I had. So that that's it for the build. And with it, the gameplay, I just want to touch a bit on the gameplay because it's really, really simple. I'm doing like all... I can to stay in melee range and attack as much as I can with MAM. The only thing I would say is to go for crit percentage, crit damage and attack and attack percentage. That's the only things you want to focus on. The rest is kind of garbage. If you don't have a choice, go for HP and HP percent in the in the defense room you don't want any kind of magic <laughs> like really you don't want that and if you don't have a choice preferably go for coup de grass damage and fill rate maybe or skill uh skill cd percentage reduction would be also kind of 
good but most importantly you want attack attack damage percentage crit percentage and crit damage most importantly and with that that's it for the build with which i defeated the solo challenge run and i think you can do it as well as long as you have this build with at least level 7 bonds so now just to showcase how it works in an actual run i've skipped into the very last few layers of my run and you can see with the stats uh, that i went well mainly for what i could but also one thing that i didn't mention before i bought every item that i could because of how useful it can be so here is one actually one of the most difficult a room that you can get in the very end of the run just because there are so many dangerous enemies there is poison the, the big golems can cc you so yeah there is actually quite a few things that can kill you but you can see how much ma'am heals each time she hits so just see how how big the heals are it's almost like 100 hp per hit sometimes 50 it's 50 but she tells she just deals so many many hits that he, it heals so much just be aware that it doesn't heal on the skills it's only auto attacks so if you're low on hp you don't want to focus on damage you, fo you want to focus on doing the most auto attacks that you can but now of course what's interesting is to actually see how well it works in the last uh, boss of the run like the the hardest challenge so let's actually skip once more so the main difficulty with this boss is it's really he's really really hard to get in melee and to hit him consistent consistently just because he uses so much spells like these ones that are pushing you back and prevent you from healing well while hitting so you want to be really really careful use your dodge the most you can uh, which actually makes you stronger for the next time you hit because well it stacks with the the bonds that we've seen earlier and you want to also use use smartly your items you want to be smart with the items usage just because it can give you invulnerability for a few frames whenever you use an item so if you're really in danger you want to spam your plants just to top you and also because it can it can it can help avoiding dangerous uh, sequence and yeah sometimes it can be a bit scary but if you're using your coup de grass uh, to be invulnerable and if you can get to melee and hit a few times you can do it and even though the fight is quite long it's always the same get into melee range use your plants if you need to uh, be smart about using your coup de grass and try to get in melee and full heal yourself i finally was able to defeat him after maybe six minutes of fight that was quite kind of intense but once you done we've done that you're actually good so yeah that was my run and i think it took me about two hours and 40 minutes or something close to three hours but i finally did it and i'm not doing it again so soon so i hope you enjoyed this video guys thank you so much for following this guide Make sure you follow and subscribe for more guides on RPGs and Dragon Quest and I will see you in the next one.